everybody, it's your boy Abdullah from Out There Gaming, and today, it's been a while, but we saw the new battles come out, and today I'm bringing you guys Salman Great Deck Profile. I know it's been a minute since we uploaded, I think it's been a year since I uploaded, but like we had a pandemic, life got crazy, we're all good, shout out to everyone who reached out to me, and uh, yeah, that's right it, we're gonna get right into it. Alright, so getting right into it, play the one copy of Salman Great Gazelle. Uh, Gazelle, again, is the engine that makes our, cart, our, our deck go. It's the reason to play this deck, really, is because there's not a lot of decks in the format right now, or ever, that had a card like Gazelle, so we'll take full advantage of it. Uh, most of the time with Gazelle, you're sending um, another extender, a Salmon Great Monster, like spinning your Jaguar to try and decay your opponent, but sending Counter Trap or a regular Trap turn one is really strong, as well as using this to ladder into Mirage Stallion and getting us to our Abyss Dweller, which stops a lot of decks in the format. Just the one, it's limited. If we could play more, we would. Uh, we'll play Triple Spinny. Now, before this list, you might have seen a lot of people playing one spinny or two spinnies because having a level three extender wasn't as relevant. It was more about having a Salman Great name. So now, obviously, Spinny gives us Salman Great name as well as giving us a level three extender to be able to use Mirage Stalio, making us, uh, giving us the ability to have a more consistent turn one Abyss Dweller as well as having a more consistent uh, turn one board to get access to all our names. Salman Great is very similar to Drystron in the sense that we want to have as many names as possible so next turn we can continue our lines and continue our plays and uh, look for the OTK. Uh, in the same vein, we play the Triple Foxy. Now in the past, Foxy at three might not have been something that you might have seen, but again, we have Stalio, which is why this ratio has been bumped up. Uh, normal Summoning Foxy can also give us like another Normal Summon. It's not the best Normal Summon, but it's still something that can get us through our deck and try to dig for a Will of the Solomon Grade or a Trap card and help us continue our lines of play. Obviously, Foxy has a great effect in Graveyard where he can discard a Solomon Grade uh, card and special summon, special summon himself out and pop a card, uh, pop a face-up flower trap. So it, it helps getting rid of floodgates, getting rid of annoying field spells, and just like really cleaning up our opponent's board. And again, he's basically almost a free extender and it's a level three. So Triple Foxy, and then we play the two copies of Salmon Great Jack Jaguar. Now in the past, Salad was playing one Jaguar, but again, we know Engage came back. We know there's a bunch of um, graveyard hate in the format, especially with like cards like Aquero, and I do think Eldritch is going to see a return to the format. But we really want to see our copy of Jaguar, so we bumped it up to two, and honestly, opening Jaguar is not horrible either, just because he can bring himself back, so he makes something like Wolf on his own. Um, and Jaguar, of course, helps us recycle, helps us go for game, card is fantastic, so we want to see Jaguar. Cool. And then we play the one copy of Salmon Great Falco. Falco is good because, again, he helps us re recur our resources, helps us continue to grind, but also helps us make a Mistweller, which is really, really, really relevant now because of Salmon Great Mirage Stallio. Now, I don't believe that like Foul is good enough to play, and some of you guys might notice is that I don't play Parallel Exceed in this list either. I'd rather just play cards that stop my opponent from playing the game or help me continue to grind through, whereas I think playing Exceed takes up three main deck spots for a card that's really only power, like insane turn one to get into like a rank four dweller or whatever. And I know turn two can help you OTK and stuff, but I just feel like having the flexibility of three deck slots essentially is uh, was significantly better. Salmon creates a deck that really suffers if it's a normal summon gets interrupted. So having a card that requires you to normal summon and then link summon, not something I'm too crazy about, but the, the Falco is great just because you can do crazy stuff like Fal like Raid Dump Falco, or Raid Send Falco, Falco Reset Rage, and helps you in the grind games against the, against the slower matchups. So that's our fours. And so that's it for our Salmon Great cards. Uh, we don't play any of the other ones. Again, no foul. And we play our main normal summon, our most ideal normal summon, uh, Triple Flame Buffalo. Buffalo is... Okay, so I know there's a debate between Buffalo and Debug, and I do believe that Debug is a, still a very strong card. The, the thing with Debug, though, is it, it kind of eats every single hand trap, and then, like, you have nothing. And if Debug gets Gamut or Debug gets Ogred, you're really sad. And whereas Buffalo will help us dig through our deck, Buffalo will trigger on a lot of things, and going second Buffalo is significantly better than, uh, than Lady Debug, which is why I've chosen to play it. Also, drawing cards is really powerful because, obviously, but it helps us get in games twos and threes, see our side cards, and even in, in our main deck, it helps us see cards that, again, help us get to, help us sculpt our hand, get to a better hand to be able to make Dweller, plus a counter trap, maybe a Rage, maybe a hand trap. So I really like uh, Buffalo for that. The chain blocking is really strong, and of course, it's really hard to get around Buffalo's effect because if he leaves the field, he's triggering. So, triple buffalo, and that's our normal summons. We're playing other debugs. We play the one CR cover. Again, he's again it's a level three extender that comes up for free essentially, and we continue to cycle him because we'll overlay him onto the Stalio. Uh, so yeah, and it, the, the fact that he's a water type has never really come up with uh, Stalio restricting the fires because you're using him to make Stalio in the first place. And our cover is really strong as well because it's a side burst, so it doesn't affect our other lines with Transco Soccer, for example, or Splash Mage after if we needed something like that. It's just a very solid, very strong extender. You can also discard this off Buffalo and it does the same thing whether it's in Graveyard or Hand. Uh, so just the one Arc Rover, I don't think you really need any more than that. Like you have enough threes where you can make your style pretty, simp pretty simply. 
Uh, then we play the triple Ash Blossom. Uh, Ash is the only monster-based hand trap that we play in our deck. Uh, this format, I believe, uh, triple tactic talents is gonna be pretty solid. And I think that I don't wanna play a card that really loses two talents or that forces, uh, that gives my opponent a chance to talent to take my monster, for example, or whatever. Um, so we play Ash Blossom. Ash is, Ash is generically strong, and if Striker is back in the format, then having that Ash for the engage, and then counter trapping something else or raging something else is really strong against that matchup, as well as just being good in like almost all instances. It's also level three fire, so we have synergy with our deck. And of course, Sunlight Wolf can consistently add back Ash Blossom, so we can always have interruption of play with our a play against our opponent. So three copies of Ash, that's it. So we have to play 17 monsters, basically all required for our deck to function. And we'll go right into the spells. We play the one Solomon Grey Sanctuary. Obviously, you need to play it as a brick, but honestly, like getting Sanctuary is more important than almost anything else in the deck. So if you can normal summon into Sanctuary, if you have to choose between desires and like, you know, shot just like not having an extra extender, it's probably better to search the sanctuary out. You really need this card to play your game. We'll play the one sanctuary, the one circle, again, limited to one, so we play it. Uh, searches our deck for whatever we want. In the draw phase, we can dodge Droll with it because it's a quick play spell. And a secondary effect is kind of like an Eagle Booster where it makes our um, our relink monsters unaffected, so that's pretty strong. We play the two copies of Solomon Great uh, Will. This is honestly a card that I think the deck should bump up to three, uh, potentially. I think the card's really strong because most decks, and if we look at like some of the format, uh, the decks in last format, where they're, they're like a normal summon, then an extender, like tri Brigade kind of functions like that. And I think Salmon Grade and tri Brigade kind of exist in the same space of like one or two plays, and then, you know, they just kind of grind you out of the game. And uh, Will is insane, because Will lets us play through a lot of disruption. It's a soul charge every single turn. It can special from our hand. Like, the card is really strong. And it, honestly, when it's on the board, it has to be dealt with. And if you have Valence Engrave, you can protect it. So it's just a card that like, forces our opponent to deal with. So it's not an interruption, but it is something that they have to break and they have to get rid of. Like, Salmon Grade's board is so sticky and Will just literally helps you do that, uh, which is why I play it. Now I play another card um, that you'll see later, which is why I don't play the third Will. But again, like, I, I think it's just, it's justifiable. This card is insane and it really helps us push for game through transcode plays and thick jammer and stuff like that, but also just lets us make Dweller as well. So this card is just great. Honestly, like, if other archetypes had it, they'd be very happy. Uh, so that's it for the Salmon Grade named cards. Now we play more consistency cards. So we play the Triple Sign at Mining. Uh, mining gives us any monster, we need, any cybers we want in our deck. It searches almost every monster in our deck, except for the Ash Blossom, I believe. And the card is just, oh, well, it doesn't search the forge, right? Like, or no, it doesn't even, whatever. It searches any monster that we're really missing for the situation. So mining is really good. It can trigger Gazelle by sending Spinny or Jaguar or whatever. Most of the time you're not going minus with this card. And again, more consistency is always a good thing because we are playing a redundant deck and we want to see, we want, we want to have access to our cards. Uh, then we play three copies of Pot of Desires. This card is literally Pot of Greed in this deck. Like, it says draw two. I think if you're, if, I think it's one of the strongest cards in the game. And I think if your deck can play Desires, you should absolutely play Desires. And I think playing a deck that has access to Desires is, is very attractive. And it really does, it really, it really is like a win in that deck's favor, um, being able to play this. Now with our buffer lows, as well as like all the other search cards that we play in our deck, um, it's really easy to thin our deck and then have Desires or buffer Low, for example, really dig us through like non like generic card, or sorry, non like Salmon Great cards. So we can see our hand traps, we can see our sideboard, we can see like Salm Strike, we can see all kinds of crazy, really, really strong cards uh, that again, you can't search, but Desires lets us do that. Again, lets us extend, lets us keep up in the resource game. And it's really hard to lose when you resolve Desires going first. Uh, then we play Triple Tactic Sounds. Again, Salmon Great kind of just like eats hand traps at like every single point, because unlike other decks, Almost every single play that we make, let's say we like link away debug or, or we link away buffalo or whatever, or using Stalio effect, it, it's susceptible to a lot of monster based hand traps. Like it's like Bell hits Sunlight Wolf, for example. We have Stalio, which gets hit by Ash, Valor, um, Gazelle itself, Sign of Mining, things like that. So Talents lets us play through that, not just by drawing, but by taking our opponent's monsters going second, as well as just ripping a card from our opponent's hand. So it's just, I think it's a really, really strong card this format. And I think Solomon Great, because you have you play so many other cards which let you get your engine consistently, you can afford to play cards like this, which might seem a little win more, like to say, like for lack of a better word here. But I think Talents is really strong in this deck. I think Talents is going to see a lot of play this format. Uh, the card is great, it says draw two as well, and we play all the cards that say draw two. That's it for our spells. I believe it's 13 spells, mainly all just, just consistency, right? Our spells are just consistently, consistency and then extenders. And so it really helps us play the same game constantly and always know what we're gonna go do. Uh, now for the Sound Great Traps, we play the Double Roar, or yeah, Double Rage and the One Roar. Uh, Roar is 
not as good as Rage, just because you know this actually deals with boards and like going second. If you can kind of like interrupt your opponent a little bit and you turn it into a grind game, Rage will win you in the long run. But just having the counter trap to go for game or to stop something that you can't deal with or you can't interact with otherwise is really, really powerful. Uh, and I, but I do favor the Rage over the Roar, which is why I play two. And really with this deck, because we're going to be looking to go into Stalio and Gazelle is going to be dumping a three, we really want to open one of these trap cards because then we have access to both. And obviously if you open one, we can set the other and that's really strong too. So I think this is great. I think you could probably cut this down to, to one, but I, I really like having Rage in deck. And if I desire, uh, it's, it'll be, it's very unlikely that I banish all three of these. So you'll always have a trap card to go for. And that's it for the Zombie Traps. And I will go into the more powerful ones, let's say, like the ones that you can't really search or dump with because I would play Triple Solemn Strike. I think Strike's really strong in this format. Uh, I think it was strong last format, and I'm gonna continue to believe so, and I continue to play this card. Uh, this card stops a lot of decks turns. Again, Spell Speed 3, so it's hard to, you literally can't deal with it. And when you combo this with Rage, it's a board breaker. You combo this with Roar, essentially it can be board breaker, but most of the time, when you go first and you, you know, you cut full combo, you make a play, uh, you can most likely hold a Roar or hold a, or hold a Strike and that lets you go into access code and kind of deal with Nib that way. Like Nib does suck for this deck, but anyways, Strike is really good. It trades one for one, but most of the time it's trading one for one with cards we really want to trade one for one war for, but like we don't hate it. Like uh, normal summon effect, Strike, okay, there goes your normal, or like you play your extender and I strike it, or, or you, I strike your normal or, and then I roar your extender. Like it just, it's really powerful and it, and, it, and it works really well with the rest of our trap cards. So again, Strike is fantastic. Um, I wouldn't play Judgment really, but Strike really gets the job done. And we play our next hand trap, uh, three copies of Infinite Impermanence. If you notice, we only play six hand traps in the main. Uh, as of now, I don't believe there's any real combo deck that just rips you apart and you can't play through. And against most of their boards, you can really make, you can use Will to extend through it. You can use Talents to try and go second and it really helps you. I know Talents is a going first card, but Talents does a lot of work going second. Uh, so we play Imperm again. It doesn't lose the Talents and it deals with a lot of cards and it hits with a lot of, a lot of cards that would be unaffected otherwise, but like it deals with like the, the Drytron matchup really well. And it's going first, it's not dead. You can set it always. Um, card's nuts, like Imperm's really strong. I think Imperm's gonna be played until we get to like a weird point in the game again. Uh, and then we play one Imperial Order. It's a win button against a lot of decks in the game spells. Most of our spells, we play turn one and that's basically it. We can always pop our own Imperm with Foxy if that ever becomes a problem, but usually you, you flip this card and you win the game. Uh, because once we've gone through our whole engine, like our spells and we've started our plays, we don't really need we don't really need our spell cards anymore. Like even the field spell isn't as relevant there once your graveyard is fully loaded up, which is something that you should be doing if you drew the order. Uh, and this deck draws a lot, right? Like we have like three different cards in our deck, so nine cards total that say draw two cards on them at some point. Uh, so having so getting access to order is really strong. And again, with Striker back, like I really do respect that deck. Uh, order just says no. Order stops most decks like consistently cards to get to their engine. So I mean, I don't need to explain this card. The card's crazy. So that's uh, 40 cards in the main. I would never play any more than that in Solomon Great. The only thing you've got going for you is your consistency, essentially. And uh, we'll go into the extra deck. And the extra deck is where we've got a lot of new cards that um, really make a huge difference in the deck's overall game plan. So we play the, the Triple Bailings. Again, this is just important. You need it. You need it in the grind game, the card search. It's a link one that points down that does something on summon. It's a plus one. Card is insane. Uh, so three Bailings, no reason to really talk too much about that. Again, the Triple Sunlight Wolf. Card is chewing. Card is insane. Really, it's one of the reasons to play the deck is because of how much advantage it generates and uh, how much it puts our opponent in like a really rough spot just because dealing with Sunlight Wolf or summoning, like sure, we give him a Link Pointer for a Link Monster, but like if you do that, like I'm gonna plus. Uh, again, yeah, card is crazy. Sunlight Wolf is just good. It's a monster you're gonna be ending on most of the time anyway. Uh, we play two copies of Heat Leo. Now I've been going back and forth between Heat Leo for the past year, but at the moment I think Heat Leo is really strong because it deals with the Sky Striker back row, it deals with Eldritch, it forces out other back row. And it's just a really good link three to ladder. It's so it's like when you need to use transcode effect, for example, or you're gonna use Splash Mage or whatever, like Heat Wheel is really strong because it helps us deal with back row while staying within the Cybers archetype, as well as if we had to use a Mirage Stalio, Heat Leo lets us use uh, a fire monster that deals with back row. Uh, that's not Nightmare Phoenix. We do play that as well though. And uh, Will Asama gets really good with Helio because it gives us three monsters to revive. So Helio is really strong. Again, maybe that's one that I'm like kind of iffy on, but I, I really like Helio. So this is like the standard like eight Salaman great monsters, like extra deck monsters that you'll see. Um, and I think they're great, honestly. Uh, the one copy of Nightmare Phoenix, Phoenix is great because it's fire as well as it helps us deal with back row. And we usually get a draw with the Sunlight Wolf or with the Bailings. And Bailings into Phoenix, you know, pop a card, draw a card. Uh, go into the Heat Leo, shuffle back another card, relink the Heat Leo, shuffle back another card. Like it deals with three back rows. So it's like, we don't really struggle with this back row decks, like, honestly. Um, so the one copy of the Phoenix, the, the only thing that gets kind of rough sometimes is the fact that it, it isn't a cyber, so it can come up with some of the other cards we play. But for the most, the matchups where you need Phoenix, um, 
you won't need the other cards, right? Like it's a slower card, um, and the, or it's a slower matchup, sorry. And then we play some of the newer cards. Uh, these cards aren't like brand brand new, but they're newer to like the Sonic the Strategy in general. So we play the Splash Mage. It's a, Splash Mage is a fantastic because then there's two Cybers monsters and it lets you bring back a Cybers monster from your graveyard and then you get restricted to uh, Cybers for the rest of the turn, but that doesn't really matter because we're just using this Ladder into Access Code. It gives us a water that lets us pop one extra card. Uh, Splash Mage is great. It just helps us ladder and that's the, that's the best part about the deck. Now when like you stop your opponent, you OTK them next turn. You're not even trying to grind anymore. Like you can, the deck can grind and still salmon great, but for the most part, you punish them. If they can't set up a negate or they can't interact with you, they're dead because of cards like this, Update Jammer. Uh, it lets you attack twice and it negates stuff on board. If that ever comes up, but it lets you attack twice with a monster that it summons. So that's, this is comboed of course with our boy Transcode Talker. And uh, Transcode revives Update, then you link the Update and the Transcode away into Access Code, or you can just leave these two up on board and you can have a 28 Swinger that attacks twice and then a guy that's 2500 that can be targeted. So th this, is, this is how we're finishing a lot of our games uh, in addition to Access Code Talker. And like, for the most part, when you're linking into like all of these and you're laddering up into all of these with like your bailings, you have access code on board with essentially five pops because you can manage the access code on field. But for the most part, you're, you're popping you're popping four cards that your opponent can't respond to. And then you're gonna have a 5K swinger that attacks twice. Like this is our finisher, which is insane because some decks have the debate between access code and mortal sword, but this kind of does the same thing. It does both in our deck. Access code's great, it's a cyber, it doesn't restrict us. Insane, insane. That's it for the links. And then we go into the XYZs. We play the one Mirage Stalio, just came off the ban list. Uh, card is nice because I think one of the big issues with Salad before was it's it's really awkward to deal with monsters that are like 2200 attack or like above 18 really. And Stalio gives us those outs because we can just bounce that card. And again, 2000 lets us contest a lot of monsters that we don't need to use trap cards on. Uh, we don't need to waste resources on. So, and the card is great, right? Like it increases our consistency to get to Gazelle, which increases our trap cards, but also increases our consistency to get to this guy, Abyss Dweller who is just an insane card. Now you could play Beluska as well, but I think Dweller's just nuts. Like it does really well against all the decks in the format with the exception of maybe Sky Striker. But if you're going first or if you're going second, sorry, you can still make Dweller and deal with the back row going through the Phoenix and the Heat Leo line and with the Dweller and then run over the link and not let Raid trigger. And uh, that's relevant, that's really relevant. So that was it for the extra deck guys. And that's it for the deck. And that's it for the profile. All right guys, so that was the deck profile uh, again. Nothing too new, but really I think with the way that the ceiling of the format's been brought down and the potential of Solid Magritte to just grinding into slower decks as well as OTK, uh, I think Solid is sitting in a really great spot. Um, and really I'm looking forward to playing in this format again. I'm really looking forward to playing Yu-Gi-Oh again, for real. In real life as well as online. Uh, so that was the video guys. If you liked it, you know, leave a like. If you enjoyed the video, comment down below. And I have a question for you guys, because we, we've been debating this at home all the time. Who is the best, which anime has the best written villains in it? Comment down below, let me know exactly what you think about that. That was a blue from Mathur Gaming, signing off.